I realized I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity and I try to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets me. Although there have been times when my flesh gets the best of me, so my appetite for sin is hungrier for the ungodly. And even though I pray for forgiveness of my iniquities and I make false promises I know I can't keep and I make expectations I know I can't meet. But God has already forgiven me of my sins and he cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. So why do people try to go fishing where God says it's off limits? Casting their rods into the depths of a clean ocean. Riding on boats of self-righteousness. Casting nets of judgment. Deep sea diving with goggles of false witness. All because I cast my pearls to pigs who turn their back on me and try to turn me into pieces. With hopes of destroying my reputation with past sins that are no longer relevant. So be careful who you share your past, your present, and future with because people will take your testimony and twist it. Because if God has forgotten about it, then who are you to remember it? If we claim to be without sin, then we only deceive ourselves. So what makes you think that you're exempt but nobody else? If we would judge ourselves, then we would not be judged. But when God judges us, he disciplines us. So we don't have to be condemned by this world system. So the next time you decide to go fishing, where God says it's off limits, be prepared to be convicted for touching God's anointing. A new poem I just wrote. It's called Judas. I heard it through the grapevine that she was talking about me behind my back, slandering my name in conversations with no validation and no tact. But every time I see you, you smile at me away back. So I was a little bit surprised when the situation was brought to my attention. I thought, now clearly this is one big misunderstanding. I mean, we go to the same church. We listen to the same pastor. We touched hands in agreement before we prayed and fasted. We used to chop it up at women's conferences and congregated at the classes. We both serve in a ministry spreading the word to the masses. Man, we go way back. You invited me over your house. We broke bread with each other. We used to slap box and freestyle like we were sisters and brothers. So I can't understand for the life of me how you could turn your back on me. I guess I was in denial thinking Judas would never have the opportunity to kiss me. See, I tried to give you the benefit of the doubt, thinking since we both Christians, surely you know to keep my name out your mouth. <laughs> but obviously that was a mistaken judgment on my part, because while I was loving you unconditionally, you stuck a knife in my heart. Now I'm sitting over here bitter, not knowing which way to go, thinking to myself, dang, if I can't trust you, then wow. I can't trust nobody no more. Wow. I mean, if we supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ, then why can't we the main ones stirring up strife, mm -hmm. causing division instead of increasing the kingdom? Yeah. Then we run out to the world professing Christ as our savior, but the scent of our fragrance smell more like roast repellent. Wow. <laughs> we ain't saving no souls or asking for forgiveness. We lacking the fruits of the spirit, not showing compassion on God's people. We can't hold water, running around telling everybody's business, just flat out inconsiderate. Right. And see, that's why we got so many CME Christians. You know the ones that go to church Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. <laughs> they probably figure, I just stay out here with more people. <laughs> so instead of walking around backstabbing and being two-faced, we need to realize that we all need God's grace. Right. And just because you think you got your whole house in order, that don't give you the right to throw stones at your brother. All right. Man, we supposed to love each other like we love ourselves, but if you don't love yourself, then that's a problem in itself. Right.